What's up guys? Thanks for stopping back by the channel as always here at the Auto Shop Life. So the other day we did a tool haul. It's going to feature the new M12 die grinder in it, but I figure it deserves a video on its own and I got a few things to talk about it. Check it out. Shut up and sit down. All right, guys, so as you know, the M12 line is getting stronger every day. Milwaukee's been coming out with, you know, some great stuff for us techs and, you know, really tools for people in all different trades. Um, I got my grinder probably about two weeks ago, maybe 10 days per se. Been using it around the shop. Definitely got some thoughts on it. Um, you know, wanted to show it in a tool haul video, but this thing does deserve a video on its own. But that's not the only reason. I want to test out some of the attachments that you could use with this thing and the speed rating and all that stuff after I give my thoughts on it. What I got is a bunch of attachments that you usually use on the pneumatic grinders. You know, mostly the uh, snap-on buffer that I've been using that this one's obviously gonna be replacing. I use mostly the Rolock discs. Um, you know, never really get the wire brush on there. I don't go too crazy with it. Just put the one, you know, locking style Rolock disc on there and just go to town different grits, different sizes, but this one's got the speed control, obviously. You could do a little more with it. We're gonna talk about that, show you guys not only what comes in the box of the 2485-20, which is the bear tool. I picked that one up. This is the one I got two weeks ago. And then just today I picked up the 2485-22. So we'll show you guys, maybe dive down, show you guys what comes in each box. If you guys looking for, obviously the bear tool just comes with a bear tool. This one comes with couple batteries, charger, and a, and a bag. But get this thing broken open, show you guys what's in these boxes, what to expect if you guys pick this up, and then we'll get off into the attachments. All right, guys. So pretty much here's the 2485-20, 2485-22 kits. Um, the bear tool is what I purchased. Obviously, you guys know me. You know, I got Milwaukee batteries for days, chargers for days. You know, pretty much any mechanical tool or tool that I could use in this shop, I tend to pick up. Um, but this is a great one. It's definitely, uh, you know, in my eyes, believed to be a heavy hitter. Probably going to be one of my favorites compared to the, you know, the long nets that came out just because, you know, I've been using the snap on long nets. Never really had a problem with those. But, you know, I definitely had a problem with the airline using pneumatic 90 degree grinder or using the, the buffer for, you know, what I've been using it for, which is clean the hubs, you know, knock down a little corrosion, rust here or there. And, you know, what they say this thing can do, what the box claims and everything else, this is exactly what I've been looking for. Um, just got the two amp hour battery on here. That's exactly what comes in the full kit. But with the bear tool, you're pretty much, you know, you open up this box, you're pretty much getting the instructions, you know, lots of packing. Um, I think they got their list of all the M12 lineup and M18 poster type thing that they have in there and you're getting two wrenches pretty much to, you know, lock and unlock it to get the, you know, attachments on there. Um, what, 11 sixteenths and half inch. They don't say Milwaukee on it, but they got a nice little hanging thing on there and they're definitely pretty, pretty thick. They're not thin like most of them. I've seen, you know, definitely some nice quality, you know, tiny little tool wrenches for this thing. Um, but here's a tool. The handle's pretty bulky, but it's got the gauge on there. Obviously, you know, brushless, fuel, got the sticker on it, just like any normal uh, Milwaukee tool does. Uh, the snout sticks out a pretty good, pretty good far away. You know, uh, definitely, definitely okay for me, but here's the settings in the back, feature in the back. This did have a sticker on it. We'll check it out on the other one when I pull it out, but that's pretty much the bear tool. It's got the little locking tab on there. You know, you, it's a love-hate thing with this thing. Um, you know, obviously, uh, there's the trigger there. That's what pushes it in, so it has to be something. You know, maybe they could have went with a button style, but this ain't bad either. You get that finger in there, and you can kind of just knock it up, squeeze it. And once it's, once it's squeezed, you could kind of control it there, you know, kind of let it off without having to hit it every time once it's flipped up. But light down under, that's pretty much it. Pop a battery in this bad boy. I already got the attachment on there. I like to use the rigid ones. This ain't the rubber one, it's actually plastic. So when I'm using the smaller attachments, you know, you get kind of get more control out of it. Or when you're using the three inch one, it doesn't flop around and cut into the side of it when you're using them. Um, but Milwaukee actually don't recommend this for all three inch cutting discs. Um, the three inch wire wheels, you know, it's not re recommended for, but you know, maybe we'll get over to the parts bench and uh, try it out, see see what's going on, check the various speeds and all that stuff. Uh, show the uh, 
show the list that Milwaukee recommends. So as you guys can see, some of the bigger three inch, obviously the wire cup, it's not recommended in the two inch or the three inch. You can see the wire wheel, it's not recommended in the three inch. And then obviously the cutoff wheel and the, uh, the bristle discs is not recommended in the three inch. But here's pretty much the attachments, the ones I pretty, we pretty much use are here around the shop. Mostly, you know, some we use more than others. You know, obviously, I'm not real keen on the wire brushes, you know, whether they're a good brand or bad brand, whatever, you know, you always end up with some metal in your pants or if you're not wearing safety glass, it could possibly be in your eye. But, you know, if I were to use it, I'd probably use the smaller ones as opposed to something huge like this. You could see I've used this probably once or twice and it just sat around. I don't use the bigger one too much outside of, you know, cleaning up those rims and things like that. Uh, you know, I'm mostly using the bristle type ones. But anything in the three inch that I do use on these things, um, pretty much using, you know, the, the real abrasive, you know, that's when you get down and dirty, you got to really get that rust off or you're cutting back some metal, fabbing something, something like that is really where I'm breaking these out. Mostly I just use the roll lock disc. We got them in a couple different grits here, um, you know, fine, medium. There's probably even more of them more than this, but these are the main ones we have in the shop here. You know, real abrasive and then medium and, and kind of fine. And then we got the bristle ones, the two inch. These are recommended on there at a certain speed. Um, Milwaukee does show on the box, you know, where they're recommended at right here. What's recommended, you know, the RPMs and all that stuff. Talking about the settings. Uh, setting one is 10,000 RPM. Setting two, 15,000. Setting three, 20,000. And then setting four, 2450. So, I mean, this thing pretty much cooks in speed number four. Uh, I definitely have to say I like the way, you know, you get the, you definitely get the uh, trigger control, the way it amps up, you could control it. And then when you stop, it's not an abrasive stop. You know, it kind of slows down and then stops. So that's kind of nice. The ones with these locking ones, you know, tend to fly off when you stop it right away or abruptly. So I kind of like that feature on it. Definitely like the light feature. Um, you know, I've seen guys on YouTube talking about where else would they put the light, things like that. You know, they could have put it in other areas, but where it's at, for the most part, you know, if you're getting into a dark area, you know, grab a flashlight, grab a headlight, you know, if you need to see that bad. You know, having a light on there is cool enough for me. Definitely a uh, big design. Plus, you know, you kind of figure it protects, you know, your finger maybe from slippage or anything hitting there. You know, it's a nice little stop there for the trigger, but definitely dig it. Definitely dig the gauge. Always like to see that on the brushless tools. You can see this battery I've been using for a while. It's got three dots on it. And then the settings here are pretty nice. You got one all the way pulled. Here's two. Three. And setting number four. I mean, it pretty much cooks. You could definitely tell the difference in each of the settings. Um, what I like about this thing, too, is it's got the... You know, you're getting too crazy with the tool, it's pretty much got the lockout feature where it protects mode. You know, you're grinding down on something, you're pushing too hard or getting too crazy with it. You know, it will shut off to try to protect the tool. When we get down to the bench, you know, we'll, we'll definitely do some testing on that. But getting back to the attachments, getting back to what comes in the, the bigger kit. Um, the bigger kit we got, so pretty much you got the box. Comes with a bag. Nice bag, different from a couple other ones that I've seen. I've definitely seen these, but they do have a few different ones. And then you got the two, two amp hour batteries. You got the tool itself. This one does come with the tools and the, uh, the charger that just does the M12, not the M18, not the fast charger, anything like that. And then here's the instructions and the little poster pamphlet and all that stuff. So nice little package and you know, for the price, you're probably getting more bang for your money if you go ahead and buy the kit. But like I said, I got tons of batteries. I mean, I can't even fit them in my power drawer anymore. So, you know, the extra batteries I do have, you know, kind of just are on standby right now or maybe wait till one goes bad or runs out of warranty and then I'll kind of rotate them in. But we'll get over to the parts bench, get some of these attachments on there and see, uh, see what this bad boy can do. All right, guys. So we're all set up here, brought all the attachments over here. And, uh, you know, like I had mentioned, most of these three inch ones, you know, you won't catch me using on it. Some of them I do, like I said, uh, mostly the abrasive ones, you know, maybe I'll put a bigger bristle style on there or something like th this that's actually covered, you know, it's, it's a, it's a wire wheel one, but it's actually covered in like a, like a rubberized pinstripe remover. So it's kind of non-abrasive. These are great for rims, you know, and having the rubber on there, the metal's not flying off at you and in your face and all that stuff. So, you know, if I were to use something bigger than a two inch disc on here, it would be something like this, as opposed to something like this on there. I would probably just steer clear of using the three inch ones on there, but 
I got the safety glasses. We'll put it on there, see what it does, see if any of these bristles fall off or fly off. <clears throat> but you pretty much keep the speed intended. If you guys are unsure, most of these little attachments do come. They have a speed rating on them. This one, you can see this flapper disc got 25,000. Um, even the Rolock disc, I believe, do say it on the package. These things, I, th I think, are rated at 24, 25,000 also. Um, the bigger... The bigger one, obviously the bigger you get, the lower the number and RPM is going to be 23,000. You can see on that one, there's a smaller two inch wire wheel. This one says 4,500. So, you know, that's definitely lower than the three inch one. The bristles have a rating on there, 25,000 for the two inch. I do not have, uh, you know, a one inch or anything like that. The only other three inch one I got here is 15,000. So obviously the bigger it is, you know, the less RPMs you're going to want to use. And that's where the settings will come into play. Um, also, if you plan on using any of these roll-offs discs with this, you'll probably want to get one of these attachments. These even have a rating on them also. This one's rated at uh, 30,000, so you know, definitely, definitely good enough for as fast as the RPMs of the die grinder goes. Um, but let's get one on here and see what this thing does. You can see I got a rotor here. Definitely not the rustiest thing in this shop, but it's definitely got some rust on there. We'll see if we can cut, cut down this metal. This thing's a junk rotor anyways. We'll see if we can cut out some of that rust and see if we can shine this thing up in certain areas with certain discs. I think what we're gonna go with first is the flapper disc there. Um, you know, maybe one of these. I don't use these flapper discs too often. Um, you know, I don't even buy them in bulk. I just buy two or three of them at a time. You know, you really, these things do last forever. They are really abrasive. So, you know, what you're using these things on, it's gotta be metal that you really don't care about. Nothing intricate, nothing aluminum, nothing, you know, that you're gonna ruin anything. Um, you could definitely go too far with these. So this one's really abrasive, but maybe we'll, uh, before we get this one on there, we'll slap this one on there, start cutting into this thing. This one uh, it's got a rating on here also at 25,000. So, you know, obviously as far as the speed goes, it's a two inch. We could pretty much go all out with it, but we'll start off at maybe two or three and see what we could cut back on this rotor. I'm going to let the tool do the work. The battery's got, what, two dots on it, three dots on it. So we definitely got enough juice to kind of test this out. And what's cool is it's got the little arrow on there, so it tells you, you know, which way it's going to spin. Also, the direction of these are obviously going to spin with that arrow. If it spun this way, you know, the thing would probably break. So, just set it on there, kind of no pressure. And right away, you can tell the tool just starts to cut into it. It's not jerking around in my hand or anything like that. Definitely cutting back that rust. Kind of stop there, and I mean, you could see it definitely got it down, definitely knocked the rust off. You know, the rust around here, these rotors around here, are pretty much rust from the inside out. You can see there's a little pitting, but you know, without any pressure, without any effort, pretty much, you know, cut that thing back. This whole rotor would probably take, you know, 20 seconds, 25 seconds to do, you know, the whole outside of it, but it's not like we have to grind up on these rotors. You know, usually when we're using these on these rotors, we're cleaning the inside hub, the outside hub to kind of mount it to the, the uh, brake lathe. So that's that one, but before we switch over, I wanna use this other flapper and see how this thing handles the vibration of a two inch flapper, and then maybe we'll throw the three inch on there real quick and see what the difference is. All right, guys. So I actually went ahead and grabbed the other one um, because the, you know the reason why I got two is to leave you know this attachment on here and still be able to use the quarter inch tools on it um, without having to switch it out every time. You know, not to say I don't like using these, I'll have to use these to get this on there, but I want to get the flap around there. All right, got it attached. Pretty much left the sticker on it. That's how they look new. Kick this one down to two fifteen thousand. even though this one's rated at 25,000. We'll see what it does here and see the speed difference. Definitely a lot louder. A little more grabber in the hand and it's definitely taking more work to cut the rust back but really where these flappers shine is for the inside let's see if I get it where you guys can see here you guys can see that pretty much breathing in rust you can see definitely got the inside of that and that's thick rust in there but definitely got the inside of that no problem so that's kind of what you'd be using these flapper discs for. Obviously, an inner part, especially on something you know with a 90 on a 90 degree tool, 
you know, not a straight tool, you'd be, you know, it'd be more comfortable hitting at it like this on, from the inside than, you know, trying to go about it like this and walk it, you know, something with a contour definitely cuts in well. All right, so I put the three inch flap around here, took the two inch off of there. We're gonna go at it in the inside, the same thing, check the vibration, but what I'm gonna do, I kick this thing down to three. This flapper's rated at 23,000. We'll keep it at 20, that's definitely enough here. We don't wanna go overboard, because obviously going to four, we'd put us at 2450, it'd be over, you know, safety first. It's not like, you know, if I use it at four, it's not like it's gonna blow up or anything like that, but try to stay within the recommended range. But what I'm gonna do this time is actually, I'm gonna push, I'm gonna push super hard and we'll see if this tool kicks in the protective mode. And there it is right there. You can see I'm holding the trigger and it's not moving. Gotta release it and hit it again. Let's do it again. So that's the tool pretty much protecting itself or, or you know telling you hey you know you're going at it too hard there so pretty much you want the tool to do itself so really at that pushing that hard really didn't even knock off that much rust inside there so we're just going to go at it let the tool do the work and see if it still cuts off Not too bad. Definitely a, the smaller two inch flapper wheel did a little bit better, but you can see the tool didn't cut off. Definitely uh, definitely got in there. Definitely works. You know, even spinning it at three, you know, vibrates a little bit, but you know, that's mostly balancement on this. You could pretty much see that thing's definitely unbalanced. I don't know if you guys are picking that up on camera. All right guys, so we're gonna do these bristle style ones real quick. Bounce back to this one with the attachment on there. These things are pretty much just rubber, so I, I don't expect it to do too much, but we'll see what kind of rust we can knock off, you know, and pre push, pushing, you know, minimal pressure on there, see if one of these can knock back the rust, maybe where speed would come in instead of force. We got a brand new one on there. Let's see what it does. It definitely takes care of the middle part of the rotor where there's no rust. But the rusty part, you gotta pretty much work. It did all right. It's chipping it away. It's not really, uh, you know, cutting back the metal or anything like that. But you know, definitely smooths it out. And you know, obviously, it's not what you use these things for. Just kind of seeing what it does. You can definitely tell at speed four. You know, you can see those bristles moving. You can definitely tell. You know, these these ones are rated at twenty five thousand. So you know, hitting these at on four. Is definitely okay with me, but you can see without any pressure at all, it's definitely taking off. You know, the surface rust, it's not cutting into it too much, but it's getting the job done. I really dig it. You know, one tool versatile to be able to take care of all these adapters. You know, so as far as one tool, you know, being able to use versatile with all these attachments, you know, that's definitely great. It's one of the reasons why I picked up the second one so I could have the pad on there and then just pop in the quarter inch fittings on whatever attachment I'm using. As far as the cutoff wheels, you definitely ain't going to catch me putting a cutoff disc on this, whether it's a two inch, three inch, whatever it is. You know, you guys are looking into, you know, using a cutoff in it. I definitely recommend the 25, 22, three inch cutoff tool um, by Milwaukee if you're going to use anything, you know, any attachments like this. You know, they do make adapters for it where you can use it on there and put it on there, but, you know, I'd rather use a different tool for something like that. But we'll check out this wire brush here. Um, this is where things start to really get crazy here. If you guys are still hanging on to the video, hopefully we don't lose an eye. Got it loose there. Push it in a bit. Tighten it up. We'll turn that sucker down to setting one. I don't want to go too crazy here. I, I really don't know what to expect here. Um, and then we'll do this the same thing. We'll go at the inner part of this rust, see what we can get away here. Go to a rusty spot over here. See what this one does. Actually, not too bad. And it's even getting the bottom portion of it. Um, you can see there, I, I kind of pushed too hard there. I don't think I was going at it too hard, but I'm guessing, you know, that whatever setting you're on, it's going to be, you know, less and less pressure you're going to be able to put on it. So setting one, you know, barely any pressure. Setting two, you'll be able to put a little more pressure. And then same with three and four. Four, obviously, you'd be able to put the most amount of pressure on it before it goes into cutoff mode. But 
Like Milwaukee says, just let the tools do the work. And it'll definitely get the job done. Um, like I said, I'll be using these wire wheels more or less for tires. You know, that's why I got this tool. Pretty much put the two inch wire wheel on here, knock down those tires, all that stuff. This will probably be by the tire machine, but there you have it. All right, guys, getting to these abrasive woven discs. Um, probably, probably the most popular one in the shop. Uh, you know, the brown cookie. Definitely use these a lot on those inner hubs, things like that. You know, I'll uh, I'll get crazy on some aluminum sometimes with these. You just got to be really careful. But these definitely get the job done. Um, get the tool on there. Make sure it's nice and tight on the adapter. Pick okay, this one up to about three. We'll see what it does here. Definitely knock back the rust. Definitely gets it, gets the job done. Before we wrap this one up though, we're gonna break all the rules, put a three inch non-woven abrasive disc on here and just go at this rotor, see what we can cut into. There we go. Definitely strong enough to knock out some Illinois rust. Living in the rust belt, stuff gets crazy. Definitely, uh, definitely a great tool without the air hose to be able to take care of a lot of that rust and cutting back a lot of that metal and doing a lot of that fabrication work that I like to do, customized stuff. But we'll wrap this one up, guys. So my final thoughts on these M12 angle grinders. You know, definitely, uh, definitely what I've been waiting for. I got, I got really no gripes. Um, you know, the trigger is obviously something I could get used to. You know, I've already been used to this trigger. There's plenty of pneumatic tools with this style trigger. You guys heard it before. You know, it's, it's feel the same. Um, the handle is a little bit bulky, but I think that's more or less because of the trigger pull. Um, the, the trigger pushes your fingers that much further out, but you definitely get control of it. You definitely get the grip. Um, Definitely, as far as the speed rating goes, definitely a nice feature. You probably just want to make sure the attachment you're putting on there, you know, when you're using it, is within the speed range you want, especially with those wire wheels. I mean, that's probably the, the biggest one. You know, anything else you could probably control, but you got to figure the bigger the attachment, the more vibration you're going to get. You know, the tool may shut down. You may be able to press a little less. You know, you can't get as aggressive with the tool. You know, but Milwaukee says let the tool do the work. And obviously, you guys can see it's cutting the rust, even cuts Illinois rust down. You know, it's it says a lot. It says a lot for a tool, you know, with minimal effort. I definitely dig it. You know, I dig it so much. I went ahead and picked up another one. Like I said, this one will probably stay by the tire machine, you know, cutting back on those rims, taking care of the lip, the seat, the tires, you know, on the corrosion ones, and then just use it without one of the attachment. This will be my roll lock one. Anything the quick style locking tab ones for this. And then this will be the one, obviously, I'll have to use the tools for and just put in the, the quarter inch attachments, anything that's attaching wise that I'm going to need for the certain jobs. And also as far as the wire wheel one, yes I got two, one for tires and to put the attachments on, one pretty much for those quick style locks, um, but I see that Milwaukee's definitely going to be coming out with a straight one, uh, maybe I'll sh switch that to the wire wheel one, um, you guys can see it here in the pamphlet, you know, spoiler alert, you could definitely see, definitely be picking up a straight one because that would probably be even better for tires and things like that that I'll be using this one for, would be better for a straight one and then just have a backup one as far as the attachment go for the cars and cleaning gasket and all that other good stuff. So, but my thoughts, you guys looking into getting them, definitely worth checking out. Um, I'd have to say out of the three tools that Milwaukee's dropped, this is definitely one of my favorites, definitely something I've been waiting on. You know, if I lost this today, would I, you know, if I lost it or walked out of the shop tomorrow, would I buy another one? Definitely, you know, definitely something that is definitely a great asset to the shop. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to make some money with it you know, save time, all that good stuff. You guys know I'm all about saving that time, making that money. But about to get out of here, guys. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Check you guys in the next one. Signing out.